Welcome to today's live. It is Friday, July the 28th. Today we're talking about how do I disagree and maintain harmony. If you're here live, please say hi. And if you have any comments or questions throughout, would love to see them and we'll answer them. And if you're watching this on replay, please put in hashtag replay and the same thing. If you have questions, comments, post them and I will respond. And, and uh, so thank you for being here with us and answering the call. I'm the, Peggy O'Neill. I'm the founder of Answering the Call. And what we do here is answer that, that long, by call I mean that longing, that sense of there's something more in, in my life. There's something more available. I just know there is. And so we're answering that call in two ways. First, knowing who we truly are, which is one shared being with everything and everyone the nature of which is peace, happiness, love, fulfillment, joy, meaning, freedom. And then the second is, now that I know that and I feel it and I'm living it, then how do I uniquely express that and spread that in the world? Not like spread by talking about it, but spread with my being and my expression and how I live. So I'm excited for our topic today. Hey, Sharon, good to see you. So glad you're here. All right, so how do I disagree and maintain harmony? We're gonna delve more deeply in into the context of a conversation that can hold disagreements and harmony at the same time. How to return to feelings of harmony when we get activated, and we will, and a practice to integrate to integrate just like into your everyday life so that you have the body and the way of being that can maintain harmony more naturally when we get to those situations. All right, so the context of a conversation that can hold disagreements and harmony at the same time. So one way to think about that is something called a mandorla. I don't have the picture of it here with me. Let's see. Uh, can I draw one? I'll draw one really quickly. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I do have it here. So a mandorla. Mandorla is where uh, uh, the idea of it is, the, the original idea of it is that it's earth and spirit and then they overlap. How do we live on the earth as who we truly are, the spirit and energy that we are. But what it also represents is when we have things that seem to be in conflict. So like earth and our, our spirits seem to be in conflict, uh, you know, living in the seeming material world when who we are is energetic beings. How does all that work? So the idea here today is that, that we're trying to be in harmony, but yet it feels like disagreement. And yet in the overlap of those two, something much more meaningful and powerful and alive and possible can emerge out of the conflict. Hope that made sense. So, so if we think about it that way, oh, I can hold, and it's a paradox too, how do I hold two conflicting things at the same time? And the mandorla teaches us, it's a symbol that's used throughout the world and that the overlap is uh, where something new can come out of this seeming conflict. So that's the context that we can be in when we want to be in harmony with someone else, but yet disagreement is occurring. Oh, I can hold them both. I'm capable of that. And knowing that something so powerful can emerge from that. It must be wanting to emerge or those two things wouldn't be happening at the same time. You wanting to be in harmony and disagreement. Something can emerge from that. Of course, one of the things, part of the context is not having to be right. To be more, be in the context of something else can emerge here by us holding both at the same time, but I'd have to give up having to be right about what I want or think I want or, or in opposition to the other person. And so it's a feeling of allowing what's trying to emerge from this conflict to emerge. 
Are there any questions or comments about that first element? All right, I'll check again in a little bit. But then how do we return to feelings of harmony when we get activated? And we will. I mean, we've all been in uh, disagreements with somebody. And even if we've been living this for a really long time and we're much uh, and we're rarely activated, still we can be activated when the disagreement first occurs. And, and if we're fairly new at, at trying to live the way that we're talking about here, then it can, uh, we can be more activated. So how do we return to those feelings of harmony when we get activated? Well, one is, of course, to breathe. I think most of us have heard that and we know that, oh, I'm feeling out of harmony here. Just take a breath, breathe, breathe in slowly. That can help us get back to being fully present, being in our bodies instead of in our in emotional upheaval and help us relax. Also, let's say the disagreement's going on and you, you can really tell you're activated, then you can ask, say, hey, let's pause for a, a few seconds, a few minutes. I wanna, I wanna get, get myself relaxed. Or you could say, if that felt uncomfortable to say that, because uh, for whatever reason it felt uncomfortable, you could say, give me, let's give me a minute or two, I wanna think. That may, that's what most people are used to. We're not thinking though. I don't want you to think, <laughs> but that's what you could say to somebody else. So it might seem more natural than saying, I want to relax. Um, so, uh, so you say, could we pause here so I can think for a minute or get present or relax, whatever words are most suitable for you. Another thing that you can do is, and you can do this in the middle of the conversation, you can notice, oh, I'm starting to feel agitated. And that would be a clue to do one of these things, to breathe, to ask to pause for a few seconds or minutes. And, but the other is, I'm agitated. Oh, focus on my heart. Bring my attention to my heart as you're talking. Now that can be very challenging. I'll admit when we're in upheaval, trying to focus on our heart can be challenging. But I'm going to give you a practice to integrate on your, in your regular everyday life. So not when you're in, out, uh, you know, in, in a disagreement sort of conversation that can help here, um, but it will make it easier to focus on your heart. But you can try and go, oh, let me focus on my heart and see what, see what you can do. But over time, if you integrate this other practice, it'll be easier for you to return to your heart. And you could, and you could do that also while you're asking to pause and think or, or reflect or, um, uh, or relax then focus on your heart. Another thing that you can do is because often, at least in my experience, when I'm feeling dis dis that I'm disagreeing with somebody and kind of starting to get agitated, it's more in the upper body. It seems to be in my arms, upper arms and chest and then into the head. That's where I feel the agitation. Well, I don't feel the agitation in the head, but, uh, but, but often it's because we're so focused on our thinking that we, we, we're in this agitated mode. So we, so it's the upper, very upper part of the body that's getting our attention and our energy. So we can breathe into this or just, or just invite ourselves to get into the, our whole body, the more grounded part of our body, which is the part the solar, solar plexus and below. The solar plexus, if you don't know, is right at the base of your rib cage in the center of your, uh, the center of your body, but the base of the rib cage and your stomach so that you let yourself feel more grounded and getting out of your head, out of the agitation. Well, you'll still experience that uh, agitation, but to move more into the center area, the stomach area, the, 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 um, the um, um, solar plexus area. So that's uh, how to return to feelings of harmony. So return to feelings of harmony. You can do that by breathing, take, you know, taking some deep breaths or just noticing your breath. You can ask them, ask for a few seconds to pause and, and relax or think or um, however, whatever word you want to use. You can focus on your heart and you can get centered in your body, which would be between, uh, bet uh, between the, uh, the solar plexus and below to get, you could also focus on your feet on the ground. Just get yourself more and in, deeper into your body. 
Now, uh, let me see now if there are any questions or comments so far. Sharon, pause. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Instead of immediately responding, stop, relax, and let the answer come. Yeah. Great. And that's another great way to, uh, or another opportunity for me to bring up Mandorla because that's also what you're, um, you're communicating with that is that you know you stop respond relax and you're letting the answer come the answer isn't in the disagreement the answer isn't also in the harmony the answer is in holding that paradox holding both of those energies and then what wants to emerge or as Sharon's saying let the answer come great Sharon thank you for that and then the practice to integrate so that you have the body and way of being that ma can maintain the harmony more naturally is this. So um, you can take notes if you want to. Uh, but anyway, here's what it is. That whenever you meet another person today, and then every day, imagine dropping into the heart center, then opening and expanding your chest to let the heart lead your being and meet the other person from the heart instead of the mind. You don't have to think about how to do this. You just set your intention to interact from the heart, from the place in you that is accepting, allowing, and loving. We're attempting a felt shift in relating. Sometimes this will work, sometimes it won't. Don't worry about that. Just set your intention and try it with each person you meet, no matter who it is. The interaction with that person may be very brief or very deep, it doesn't matter. Accept and allow everything that comes up. Again, set your intention to lead relating from the heart. Drop your awareness into the heart center. Imagine opening your chest exposing the heart and interacting with the other from there and observe what comes up. So this can be something you can do and, and hopefully you would do, I invite you to, to live this way. You know, just that this, until it's just so natural, you don't have to remember to do this. It's just so natural. So any, any more thoughts or comments coming up? Okay, so I'll do an overview here. So, um, so how do I disagree and maintain harmony? Think about the context of a conversation that can hold disagreements and harmony at the same time. So you can think of the mandorla. Hold two things that seemingly don't get along. Disagreements and harmony don't seem to get along. Hold them, allow it all to be there and then imagine, I mean, just know that something more powerful can emerge. Does include us not having to be right about it, but knowing something more powerful, more meaningful, more, you know, whatever's trying to emerge from this conflict that we want to let it arise. How do we return to feelings of harmony when we get activated? Breathe, pause, and relax. Focus on the heart, and again, it'll be easier to do that as you do the other practice regularly. And center in your body. Get grounded in your body from your solar plexus and below down to your feet. And then the praxis, I mean the practice, <laughs> is whenever you meet another person, imagine dropping into the heart center, then opening and expanding your chest to let the heart lead your being and meet the other from the heart instead of the mind. And don't think about how to do it. Just set the intention to interact from the heart with, from a place that's accepting, allowing, and loving. So any other thoughts or comments, questions? Okay, Sharon, when we hang on to the two conflicting ideas, the creative solution can't emerge, must be opening and allowing. I appreciate yeah, you saying the, the kind of the, the the counter to what I was saying that yeah when we hang on to the two conflicting ideas then the creative solution can't emerge and so it's being open and allowing that allows that creative solution to emerge thank you for that Sharon all right so if you'd like to know more about how to I mean sorry like support 
in how to live this way, I'd love for you to get in contact with me and join us in the Praxis. Sharon's in the Praxis, and we have other lovely people in the Praxis would love for you to explore participating in, in um, knowing and living is who we truly are. And, uh, and it's a Praxis called Wisdomary Leading Praxis, an ongoing program where you get incredible support to live and, and to know and live is who you truly are, including things like this. How do we actually live this in a practical way? Thank you for being with us today, and I will see you next week.